morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Reach Blessing Church this fine, warmer morning. Come on, we got to take perspective, right? Because it was frigid the last couple of days. This is warm. So let's see. Um, announcements. Uh, I will. Okay, let me just ask. He did. I did. I tell you, I think Friday night, I don't think the burn is shut off the house. I really don't. I think it ran constantly. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that we're not going to have kids club and the Bell Bible Church tonight because the heat's not working for the church. So, pray that I get somebody else to fix that because that's, I don't know what's going on there. All the announcements are, you know, that's where all things happen. That's where we try to keep everybody updated. Um, also, just as far as it, it goes, if you're not on our email, I think most everybody that has email is, um, you want to send me a note, book me a, book, give me your email address, I'll get you on our email, we get that every week, and we uh, keep up to date that way. Um, young adults are meeting Wednesday at 6 o'clock at Main Street. The heat will be on by then, I promise, one way or the other. Uh, youth group will be Friday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, next Sunday, this is another reason I thought it would be good to cancel next Sunday night. Next Sunday we're going to have our Valentine's party, hot love dinner, over at the Hilliard building right after church. And we can have that time together. Okay? And I know people have been asking about Tubi. Hmm. I'm still waiting for Herman to actually open up the two part so I can tell you the day we go. So we will go to, but you know, it's not up to me, it's up to Herman now. So. What's that? It's probably going to be next winter by this point. I mean, you think about it. Another month, we're going to be in the spring, right? We can do this. <laughs> we haven't frozen solid yet, so. Why don't you, um, Stand with me, take your chorus sheet, we're going to have our call to worship and uh, begin our time of worship here this evening. Well, tonight, our call worship comes from Psalm 90, verses 1 through 2. Lord, you have better dwell in place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world.
You may be seated. Take your hymn up. Number 507. We haven't done this one in a while. Let's sing that and just 
Stevie's family now that is grieving, we just pray that you wrap your arms around them as well. Uh, there are so many that have lost loved ones, so many different ones. And uh, we just pray that you would continue to support and encourage. They're not on track with you. And so we pray for our leaders. We pray that they would get your wisdom, your discernment for everything that needs to happen. But we also pray that we would be the leaders we need to be. Cut off and then grab. 
grafted in. You know, so if you have a dead and you want to graft it in, sometimes they do that for productive reasons, you know, make a product more productive tree. Sometimes they do it for aesthetics reasons. It doesn't look right without the, a broken branch that might be missing or something. Um, sometimes they take and they make trees bear more than one fruit. Now that's kind of a cool concept. Can you imagine walking around your tree making an apple and a pear? And, you know. There was a uh, professor in Syracuse, some of them are actually living benches that you can sit on and use. So the proper techniques in nurturing, grafting, provide unique and practical tree growth in many different ways. Sometimes it's done for fun and creativity, sometimes it's done out of necessity to save a plant species, for instance, too. And they can save species that are on the verge of extinction by grafting them to other rootstock or, or whatever. Our passage in Romans 11 today talks about grafting, spiritual slicing of different lives together into the body of Christ. Jesus ascended into heaven that we see Saul going out and persecuting the church, starting with Stephen. And it says that Stephen's, you know, at Stephen's death, Saul was there giving his approval. And just the closeness of how this falls to what Jesus said in, Rome, or in John 15, the Romans 11 and John 15 passage, you're going to see in a second, makes me believe that, yeah, Paul did hear Jesus. During teaching, was there <coughs> closely. And after he was converted, many of these things, I think, came back to him and he understood them. And so and the problem of sin in our lives and what we need, and then that Jesus brought that grace and mercy to us, but then we're in this section here where it's actually taking that look at, you know, now that we're in Christ, what do we do? What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to be? And that's where we are. Romans 11, chapter, or chapter 11, verse 11. Romans 11, 11. Again, I ask, you know, uh, Paul's talking about the Israelites here, right? He's been talking about his people, the Israelites. Again, I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation is to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world, and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their full inclusion bring? I'm talking to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection brought a kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness, Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. For God is also able, so God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were caught out of an olive tree that was wild by nature, and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I'm going to stop in Romans for there for today. If we look over at John 15, verses 1 through 6, I just want to read this to kind of get some of the context here, what Jesus was saying as well. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 6 says, I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, but it must remain in the vine. Neither can you be than he was. I don't, I don't think that uh, first century Jerusalem was all that big that he could have escaped being around Jesus. I think he heard these things. I am the vine, you are the branches. And so it came back. 
back to him, and he used that in this dissertation he's doing in Romans about grace and mercy in the Christian life. You know, it's very clear from both Jesus and Paul's teachings that our connection to God has got to be our main priority. We need to be connected. We need to be. It seems pretty with bonfire. But you don't use green wood, we know that. You gotta get green wood a lot hotter in order to burn. But dry wood? Oh. There's no way for it to gather the nutrients it needs, and so it dies. And if it doesn't have nutrients, it doesn't produce fruit. Our spiritual life is exactly the same way. We cannot feed ourselves. We cannot support ourselves. We cannot pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. Much as people wanting to do that. But self-help books? I'm sorry. The hell self-help industry is really just we need God. That's the bottom line. We need God. We can't do it by ourselves. We need God to give us everything we need for life. And if we're going to have God, that means we need to read the Bible. That means we need to pray. That means we need to listen. That means that we need to worship. That means we need to be together. Our Christian brothers and sisters source all getting the nutrients from the soil and the water and the sunlight and everything they need. Man, you can have a lot of fruit. You know, after the first century church, these agricultural stories made a lot of sense. We've got a lot more distance from the farm. There's a lot of people that have never tried their hand at gardening. Definitely in our farm. We're not subsistence living anymore. Right? Think about that. I am the outlet, you are the power for it. We use electricity for everything, don't we? We had a small power outage the other day. I was in Hamilton buying batteries. I had just put my card in the reader, and the power went off. I still got to check with and see if I actually paid for it or not. We use electricity for everything. We need that power, right? But how many times have you had something, a light, an appliance, a computer, whatever, it wouldn't boot up, it wouldn't come on? And so you check the light bulb, and you check the cord, and, you check, and then you come back, oh, it got unplugged. Doesn't work very well, does it? Oh, our, our, our tablets and our laptops. They'll run for a little bit unconnected on battery power. But how many times you got to charge them in? Or plug them in and charge them, right? My phone goes on the charger every night. Can't use it forever by itself. You need to be plugged in daily to bear good fruit. Now, there's been times when Something's happened in an orchard, right? A freeze, for instance. And it's not all the blossoms off the tree. That's not a good thing, is it? Sometimes they'll get more blossoms than they have to harvest as they could have had. And we've got to have the daily strength, the daily input, the daily wisdom from God and be connected to bear fruit. Because we need to bear fruit. That's what we're here for. That's what we should be doing. A green branch with no fruit may look good, but it doesn't nourish anybody. It doesn't really have a purpose. How disappointing would it be to go to the orchard and find that the trees were just leaves? No apples. And boy, you go sometimes, and those branches are just covered. That would not help the farmer, would it? He wouldn't be able to sell anything. And 
can't sell anything, uh, how does he feed his family? How does he get other food that he needs? It wouldn't be good for the customer because they would stop coming. Oh, there's no apples? I'm not coming. Right? We're going to go where there is apples. It might be the most beautiful orchard in the world. It might be landscaped and gorgeous. But I'm telling you, if there's not any fruit in it, after a couple years of not bearing any fruit, it's going to be cut down and destroyed. And a new orchard is going to go in there. Or something else. The world does not need fruitless Christians. Paul says the fruit of the Spirit later on is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And I don't think that list is exhausted either. I think there's other fruits as well. Because I think one of the fruits that we have in Christian life is also encouraging others. I think one of them is sharing with others so that they accept the gospel. It's not our job to make it accept the gospel. It's our job to share with them and then God brings to keep along from that. But we've got Those fruits make our life sweeter. It pleases God. It brings a fullness and a joy. And we make the lives around us better as well. See, everybody wins. Everybody wins when we work on fruit in our lives. Temperatures. But boy, the peppers, they look good. So I've just decided I'm not, not going to have peppers in my garden here. But it's just, it's a fruitless endeavor. It takes a space without getting anything back. Sometimes we struggle with fruit in our lives. The difference with, between gardening and our own lives is that God doesn't want us to give up. God doesn't want us to give up the fruit in our lives, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, and the self-control. What are you struggling with? Where is God pruning you? Because that's usually what it ends up being. Oh, this isn't doing well? Look at it. Cut that back. We pull back. But it's worth it. Verse 22 that we read today, Romans 11, 22, Paul says this, Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. God disciplines his children. He just disciplines those that he loves. Father, in these closing moments, we just ask that you would search us. Show us what we need to know from you. 